Look at this. Okay, everybody's back now. All right, so what we call solution to a three system that's set up when it's kind of just given to you, they call it an ordered triple. And you just literally write like x comma y like you do a normal point, and then you just add the third letter, which is going to be z for these equations today. You can graph these in three dimensions. We're not going to do that in this class. You'll do that later on next year. Okay. Okay. So, whenever I have a system, I usually that's this this large. I usually just kind of number the lines. So you got three different equations here. What we're going to do, we're going to do elimination first, and then we're going to do substitution on the back. You want to just the first step, pick a variable to eliminate. And you can pick any variable that you want out of that system, but sometimes it might be easier to do one than the other. It just kind of depends on the question. And we could all attack this in a different way and still get the same answer. So if you look at the three equations that you have there, and honestly, any of the variables, I don't think any are easier necessarily than the others. Does anybody have a preference which variable you want to get rid of, x, y, or z? What do you think? You want to do y? Okay. So, whichever variable you pick to eliminate first, we're going to do elimination, but we're going to do it twice. So, whatever variable you eliminate, you have to eliminate that variable twice. So, we're going to grab any two equations out of this system to start out with. So, if I want to get rid of y, uh, which two equations do you want to pick to start with? It doesn't matter. You can pick any two of them. Any two equations in that system? The top two. Okay, let's do the top two. All right, if I do the top two here, I'm just going to lay a pen over the third one for a second. Okay, if I do the top two, what would I have to do to manipulate that so I could eliminate y, if that's what we're going to go after? Multiply the bottom line by two. Okay, so you don't have to write this down. I just do this. So I'm literally just going to copy down the first equation. x plus 2y plus 4z equals 6. And if we're deciding we want to go after y, what I'm going to have to do is take that second equation, but we're going to just multiply it by 2. That'll make one the y in that first equation is plus 2y. The one in the second, if I do that, will make it negative 2y, and we can just cross them out. Okay, so I'm going to run a 2 through that second equation in the system you see there. So it's going to give you 2x minus 2y minus 2z, and then don't forget the number. I'm going to do the 3 also multiplied by the 2. Okay, well, we're, our whole goal here is to get rid of y, so you'll notice the y's are opposite, so those are going to eliminate. Most, I don't want to say always, because you could have a situation where maybe both variables would cancel. Most of the time, though, you'll have two variables in an equation when you do this. So x and 2x, I'm just adding the bottom line to the top line. We're going to get 3x. 4z plus a negative 2z, or just 4z minus 2z, we're going to have two z's, and then 6 and 6 will add up to 12. Okay, what we're doing here, we're going to take it from three equations with three variables to two equations with two variables. So what I need to do to get my other equation, i got to repeat that process. we got to eliminate the same variable. So we eliminated y, we got to eliminate y again. I just have to pick two different equations. So I used 1 and 2. So our options here, we could do 1 and 3, or we could do 2 and 3. And it doesn't matter. Um, what, do we, what might be easier to do? If I'm going to try and eliminate y again, i got to pick two different equations than I just did. 2 and 3. Okay. So if I do just line 2 and line 3 from the original problem, what, what would I have to do to eliminate y? Or would I have to multiply one of the lines by something? What would you have to do? Yeah, we have to, that second line, I'm just going to multiply it by 2. It's going to be identical to what we just did in this last step. So that second line is 2x minus 2y minus 2z equals 6 again. And I'm doing that because if I match it up with the third line now, the y's are going to eliminate each other because one's a plus and one's a minus. I'm just copying the third line. I am not doing anything to it. 
So we multiplied the second line there by two because in our first step, we decided to eliminate y. So it's important, you gotta eliminate the same variable. All right, so when I do that, 2x and 5x are gonna give you 7x. These y's are gonna cancel just like they did before. Negative 2z and z is gonna be a negative z. I, you don't have to do this. I try to write a line through the z so I can tell it's a z and not a two because sometimes I think that can be confusing. And from here, we had three equations with three variables. And now we have two equations with the same two variables. Okay, and I know these are a lot of work, um, so don't get discouraged. They can take a couple minutes to do one problem. So my new system, I've got the 3x plus 2z equals 12, and I've got the 7x minus z equals 11. Okay, now this turns into a problem like we were doing earlier in the week. It's just two equations with the same two variables. Both equations have x and z. Um, if I wanted to try to use elimination again, how might you create a situation where you had opposite coefficients on the same variable? Like, do I need to multiply both lines, or what could I do here to maybe use elimination? What variable would you maybe go after to get rid of now? What do you think? Z, okay, if you did that, what would you have to multiply either of the lines by anything? Perfect, okay. So multiply this by two, that'll make our z's opposite. I'm just gonna write it to the side over here. So I'm just gonna copy down that first one. Now the second line, I'm gonna multiply everybody by two. So we get 14x, two times this negative z is negative two z, that'll allow us to eliminate z. And two times 11 is 22. Okay, I got opposite, so I'm just gonna add the bottom line to the top line. So I got 17 x's. And 12 and 22 is going to give you 34. Anybody know what x would be there? It's a nice number. Yeah. Go ahead. It's 2. Good deal. Yeah. All right. And I promise if I'm asking you guys to do one of these problems, I'm not going to give you anything that has a decimal. I'll just give you nice integer smoke, so nice numbers. They might be positive or negative, but I promise it won't be a decimal. So that way if you get a decimal, you know you might have made a mistake. Okay. Now, once you're done and you have a variable, and you know the value of that variable, you're just gonna back up one step and find the other variable that was in the system with it. So I had just X and Z here, so I'm just literally just, just gonna back up one step. You can use any equation in that system we wrote, or you could use the 14 minus 2Z that we manipulated a little bit, but just pick one of these, and you're gonna plug in two for X. So I'm just gonna use that seven X, so seven times, 2 minus z equals 11. And I'd get 14 minus z equals 11. So I'd subtract 14. I'd get negative z would be negative 3. So if negative z is negative 3, then on both sides we could just cancel out that negative. So z is going to be positive 3. Okay, now I have two of the three variables, and I know I'm going to rewrite it so you can see it on the screen while I'm doing it. You just got to go back up, and you can use any one of the equations in the original system and plug in both x and z, then y will be your only variable. I'm going to just copy it so you guys can see it on the screen here real quick. I'm going to write down just the very, very first line in the system in the original problem. All right, I know two of the variables. I know x and I know z. So x I'm going to replace with the 2, and z I'm going to replace with the 3. And ultimately, the only variable we don't know at that point would be y, so that's what we're going to solve for. Everything else should be numbers. So I've got 2 plus 2y two plus 12 is equal to 6. And then I would just maybe combine like terms here. I got 2y plus 14 on that left side. I think I'm going to run out of space here. I'm going to subtract 14 from both sides real quick, but I'm just not going to write it because I'm running out of space. If you take 6 minus 14, that's negative 8. And then I'm going to divide by 2. So negative 8 divided by 2 will be negative 4. And I know that's a lot of work. 
If you want to just leave it like that, that's completely fine with me as long as you find each of the three variables. If you do want to write it in that ordered triple format, what you do is you just write the x coordinate and then a comma, the y coordinate, which was negative four, another comma, and then the z coordinate, which was three. And that's how you can write it as an ordered triple. As long as you find all three of the variables, that's totally fine. Is anybody having a question? I know this problem is very long. Okay, this one is the focus on elimination. I'm going to show you how to do substitution on the back real quick. And if you're doing substitution, again, I have three different variables, x, y, and z, that I don't know. I have to have three different equations. All right, if I don't have three equations, there's no way for me to solve it. The very first equation in the system has x by itself. So the intention there is to go ahead and substitute that in for x. The, the way it's different from the ones we've done in the last couple of days, you just have to substitute it into both of the other equations here. So I'm going to take the first equation, and I'm going to substitute what x equals in that very first one into the second equation. So just 2, and then instead of x, I'm just going to copy that first line. So 3y minus z plus 6. And then just write down the rest of the second equation. So it's minus 5y minus z equals negative 2. From there, it's all just going to be some simplifying little distributive property here with the 2. So I'm going to have 6y minus 2z plus 12. Make sure everybody gets multiplied by 2. Minus 5y minus z. And just be careful. I know sometimes the z's can look like a 2. So if it's me, there's different ways you could do this. I would just try to combine all my like terms. So on that left side, just we got 6y's minus 5y's. How many y's would that be? Just one. All right, so just one y. Okay, for my z's, I got negative 2z and negative 3z. So how many z's? Negative 2, negative 1. Negative 3. And then I have a 12 over here. What I would recommend there, let me, I'm just going to move the 12 to the other side with that, with that negative 2. So it was a positive 12. I'm just going to subtract it real quick. You have y minus 3z equals negative 14. Okay. So by doing that, when I substituted in for x, I, I basically got rid of x being part of the equation. Now, I know this is a lot, but you got to do it a second time. So I plugged that first equation into the second equation. So I'm going to take and plug that first equation into the third equation. Now, when I do that, that x just has a little negative in front of it. So it's like a negative 1. So when I put in the x, just keep a negative in front of it. We're going to copy that 3y minus z plus 6. That's what y is equal to. Or sorry, what x is equal to. And then I'm going to copy down the rest of that third line, which is just plus y plus 2z equals 7. And here we're just doing a little simplifying. That little negative in front is just going to change the sign of each of those terms. So it's going to become negative 3y plus z. Negative times the 6 would be negative 6. And then I had a plus y plus 2z was just part of that third equation. All right, let's see here. I got negative 3y's plus a y. So how many y's do I have on that left side? Negative 3 and 1. Negative, why is everybody so quiet? I was tired today, huh? All right, so I got one z here and two more here. So how many z's do I have? Three. Okay, it's okay to talk. All right, now, um, I do have a plane just a negative 6. What I, again, I'm going to do kind of the same thing I did on that last um, equation. I would just move it to the other side with the other plane number. So to do that, I would add 6. So then all done, I got negative 2y plus 3z equals 13. All right, so I did substitution twice. I took the first equation, plugged it into the second equation for x. Then I repeated that process, took that first equation, plugged it in the second equation for y, or for x again, sorry. And we go from three equations with three letters to two equations with two letters. Now, easiest thing I could tell you to do here, 
can you tell in my system that I've got, I'm going to rewrite it to the side here real quick. I've got y minus 3z equals negative 14, and I had negative 2y plus 3z equals 13. What would you maybe do there as your next step if you're trying to figure out one of these variables? Which variable would you maybe get rid of? The z, this is already nice for us. These are already opposites. The negative 3z and the z, we can just cross them right out. Just We don't even have to do anything. Um, eliminate those. Now, I've got 1y here minus 2y. This would be negative y. And then on the other side, you've got the negative 14 plus 13 would just give you negative 1. Okay, and this is actually similar to the last problem we just did. Negative y equals negative 1. If I divide both sides by negative, that means positive y is positive 1. Once you have that, everything else is just backing up a step to plug it back into other equations. You can plug it in wherever you want. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to plug it into this one here. So y, which is 1, minus 3z supposed to be negative 14. We're just going to solve this real quick. Just minus 1. Negative 3z is negative 15. The negatives on either side are going to cancel out. So z is going to end up being 5. And what I would actually, you can plug those two back into any equation in the original system. What I might recommend for this problem, though, that very first equation was solved for x. Like we had, I'm just copying it so you can see it on the screen. That very first equation was x equals 3y minus z plus 6. I know y and z, so I could just plug them in there for each of those variables. So 3 times 1 minus z was 5 plus 6. And then you can grab your calculator or do this in your head. I'm just combining like terms here. So this is 3 minus 5 plus 6. Let's see, 3 minus 5 would be negative 2 plus 6. We're going to end up with our x value there being 4. All right, and again, I got all nice numbers, so I know I did this correctly. If you want to write it as that ordered triple, it's the x-coordinate, then the y-coordinate, then the z-coordinate. x was 4, y is 1, and z is 5. Does anybody have an equation? Okay, now don't be intimidated by the word problem. A lot of times the word problems are easier than the two that we just did. But we have to set up the equations. That's going to be the challenge. So I'm going to have three variables for this one. This one says we've got a vending machine. And this is totally legit. Takes nickels, dimes, and quarters. There's no vending machines that take pennies that I've ever seen anyway. So this is legit. And we're going to get three equations out of this. Okay, there's 40 coins. Nothing to do with the monetary value, just 40 coins. Like if we just count the coins, how many of each do we have? Um, so to set up that equation, just nickels plus dimes plus quarters. I'll just use N for nickel, D for dime, Q for quarter is equal to 40. Nothing to do with their value, just there's 40 coins. So number of nickels plus number of dimes plus number of quarters is going to be 40. Okay, now the second equation I'm going to grab the value of the coins. Now this is going to be like your nickels, five cents, your dimes, 10 cents, your quarters, 25 cents. And the value there is $5.30. Okay, totally up to you. Um, I would maybe just do like my 0 0.05 times my nickels, 0.10 times my dimes, 0.25 times my quarters. And that's going to be $5.30. If you guys don't like the decimal, if you want to clear that, you just scooch each of the decimal places over two spots. So you could write that same equation, do 5n, 10d, 25q. On the other side there, though, it would be set equal to 530. So if you want to do that, you can definitely do that. Now, the one that's the trickiest to set up is the last equation. It says there are twice as many dimes as quarters. I always think this is hard to set up. Okay, so it doesn't even involve all three of the types of coins, and that's okay. So it says twice as many dimes as quarters. I'm just going to make something up. Okay, let's say I have three quarters, and I have twice as many dimes. So if I have three quarters, how many dimes would I have? Six, right? 
Now, you multiplied what I told you was the number of quarters, right? So, whenever you do this, you're going to have the dimes equals twice the number of quarters. It always throws people off because grammatically, the word dimes is closer to the word twice. So, people always want to put the two with the dimes. The twice, as many as, it always goes with the word that's at the end of the sentence. And I usually just make a, like a little example up to help myself kind of figure it out. But twice as many dimes as quarters. So like if we have four quarters, then we have to have eight dimes. So I got to multiply the quarters by two. Now, you'll notice not all the equations have all the variables. And that's totally fine as long as you have three equations in your system for your three variables. This one I would tell you would be probably easiest to use substitution. So what you want to do just kind of like the one at the top of the page here, I'm going to substitute what the dimes are equal to, but I just have to do it twice. I have to do it in each of these equations. So we got three equations, three variables. We're going to take this to be two equations with two variables when we do this substitution. So the first one I wrote down, I'm just going to write nickels plus, now dimes are really twice the quarters, so I'm going to write 2q plus q is equal to 40. Just doing a little substitution. And maybe a little combined like terms. So nickels would be three times the quarters equal to 40. All right, now if I sub in the other equation, this if you worked with the decimals, then I'm gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and work with the decimals. So I'd have 0 0.05n plus 0.10. Instead of the D, I'm gonna write the two times the quarters there, and then 0.25q, 530. Okay, now, if I take, just like, like think about 10 cents. If I multiply that by two, this term right here is really point, it would be like 20 cents. Like if I take 10 cents times two, it's like 20 cents with the q. I'm just gonna save myself a little space when I combine like terms here. So you're going to have 0.05n. Okay, I got 0.2 times my quarters, 0.25 times my quarters. Add those up. It would be like 45 in front of the quarters. And then 530. So we had three equations with three different variables. Now, we have two equations with the same two variables, just nickels and quarters here. This is really totally up to you, whatever you like better. You could pretty easily get the nickels by himself in this first equation if you wanted to use substitution. I would, I, if it's me, I just kind of lean toward elimination, especially if a variable has just a one in front of it. I would just take this line here, and I'm just going to get rid of the nickels real quick. I'm going to multiply everybody there by negative 0.05. And I'm just going to write it underneath this other one. So it'd be negative 0 0.05 times the nickels. That'll eliminate those. Okay, now if you do 0 0.05 times 3, this is going to be negative 0.15 times your quarters. And I'm going to grab my calculator real quick. I'm going to do that negative 0 0.05 times 40. And this is actually just going to give me negative 2. Um, I'm going to write 0, .00 on that just so it might be a little bit easier to line up the decimals to subtract that. And this is going to eliminate my nickels. One of the equations had positive 0 0.05. The one I just created had negative 0 0.05. Now, the rest of it, like think about 45 cents minus 15 cents. This would be like 30 cents times your quarters. $5.30 minus $2.330. And it's got to be a nice number. I'm just going to divide both sides by that 0.3. Sorry if I'm really close to the bottom of the screen. And then Q, number of quarters, is just going to be 11. Now, once you're there, this a lot of times these word problems are a lot easier to plug back into. So, like, if I know my quarters are 11, where I would go from there, my dimes are just twice my quarters. So my dimes should just be 22. And then from there, I would use the very first equation. You know you got 40 coins, right? 40 total. So I'm going to do 40 minus the number of quarters, which is 11, minus the number of dimes, which is 22. And left over, I'm going to have 7. So then my number of nickels 
has to be seven. And in that question, if the word problems, they're different variables. I wouldn't write that as an ordered triple. I wouldn't write it like something, comma, something. I would just make sure I found each of the variables. So we know the nickels, that was a seven, the dimes was 22, and the quarters was 11. Is anybody having a question at the moment? Okay, I know this is a lot, and we're going to work more with this um, in our